Almighty God, we know that we pray to you, God, that we God, in heaven, and us again, we come to the throne of grace, and thank you for all the love that we've been seeing for all the rest of the world, and the heavens 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 of the world, we love you, we praise, we exalt you, Father of Jesus. Love your name, we ask it all today. Amen, amen. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
stage four kidney disease. And she's on the kidney to get a kidney from someone. But, and it's not from drugs or anything. She was born with, what is it, polycystic kidney, something or other. But, you know, I know he's concerned about her and him trying to get clean too. And, you know, it's uh, hard. I just remember when he took the Lord I got a second cousin from the name Sonny. Before most of you know him, he had a kidney removed. Yesterday, uh, he needs for her. So you can also remove with Frank Edwards. Yes. Uh, he's having a lot of problems with his heart. I can't seem to get him regulated or can't feel him better. He's in Riverside right now, actually. I remember him and his family. Jimmy, I was out walking today. There was a gentleman walking. I go with us, boy, he's about ahead of me, come toward me, no one like that. I don't know his name, but the Lord knows who he is. He was telling me, when, when he caught up with me, he said, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. He said, go ahead. He said, go ahead. Did you see that airplane come over there just a little bit ago, about 400 feet off the ground? No, I didn't. It's real. I didn't even hear one. And he got all nervous and all shook up. He said he had a brother who just died and had dementia. I think that's what he said. He said that was one of the symptoms. Oh, and he was just all shook up. Pray for his sin. Move me to the Bible. Uh, Alexis is sick and Gary's still out on the road. That's why they're not here from the soul. Cheryl posted there just a few minutes ago. So let's pray for Alexis. Let's pray for. From Melissa uh, as well, Derek and Ryan and Katie, and there's just a gang of them that we, you know we know is not here tonight. For and I say Sister Betty uh, Wiseman is at her daughter's, so I mean she'd be up there for a little while. Uh, so let's let's pray for her. Uh, again, all these names that are on this scroll down here that uh, God would touch their hearts and their lives. James and Andrew. Brandon and Sarah, we just go on and on. So, I have a cousin whose youngest daughter has scoliosis. She's just two years old. They went in the other day and put a cap on her. The kind of program was also for the last person. Anyone else? James, we met with Alicia. We're going to go down to Susan's doctor's tomorrow. Hopefully, some more quick ability. She's going to let out the chance. I just thought it was. Someone else? Like can answer just seem like every time we turn around, two or three more, not just one or two, just two or three more getting, you know, diagnosed with cancer on all sides. Remember Harold was like too. What did they do? Find the blockages, Harold? Yeah, twice. Two, uh, two blockages, what are they going to do? Don't put stents in them? No, they didn't put no stents in them. They cleaned out the two stents in there. Okay. Anybody else? What's your number, Kathy? Do you need to set you up for the other one? Larry J. Young, I think it's when all pray. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this order that you fill out the floor. I'm Lord, so come on, Lord. We pray right now, Lord, as we come to you, we would thank you for the Lord that you heard even one of these requests. We pray that my Lord will be done. Father, we know that our will be done. We pray right now, Lord, that 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 we
after he got your music, you know, the court of the riches, he was the one Lord, just touching on me, the Lord. All the Lord's Lord with them are each Lord. The church are suffering to count your Lord. Thank you, Father, we do pray. Thank you, God, for all the Lord. Right now, Lord, for Carolyn and Faith away, Lord. Pray for Kathy and Mom, and Lord. Lord, we're going to be going to Lord. Mom, and all the names that were lifted up from the Lord, as you heard them. No, each and every one of them, Lord. Thank you, Father, we come to you with thankful hearts and thankful for that. Knowing all and preparing all and seeing all, Lord. His prayer right now, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, you be in the midst of us, Blessings that flow from him. Bless this service, we pray, Lord. We yes. pray for all the unspoken requests that upon the heart, Lord, that was not made, Lord, but we pray also for these unspoken requests that can come now. I'm pray for you know who can them and what they must come for. Lord. Bless and thank you, Lord, the Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Someone have a song or a testimony. Let everybody get up at once. My father said, well, he's like, how you touch me. I know he touched me when I, sometimes, you know, he doesn't even quit touching me. I get, I get touched from the back every once in a while. I think to that uh, right across the other page where he touched me, it was a miracle. I tell you, it was a miracle that the Lord kind of saved my soul. But else. I love the Lord. I thank you for saving my soul and being with me and keeping me safe for my daughter, my church, and all my brother and sister in Christ. Somebody else. I just want to say how good Train done Sunday. He didn't say he was going to listen. He said, Jamie knew when to leave, didn't he? Because <laughs> <laughs> all it was was the son of Dave Buff and he had his son and that son. <laughs> We had a really good job. We had a really good Sunday school. I had a lot of help from the Lord. Of course, Judy was able to read the scripture before we pronounce all the uh, country of the nation. James and the Son, I'll tell you, it's a, you left me with a good one. You know, the Bible teaches us to beware of foolish genealogies. Uh, but. Honestly, they, those are there for a, a reason. Yes, they are. And they have a purpose in the, the Bible to teach us where things are traced to trace back. Uh, you get right down to it. There's not one person in here that can't trace yourself back some way, somehow, either through Sam, Ham, or Japheth. Somewhere along the line in those three uh, and uh, that's kind of a little bit mind blowing if you ask me that uh, that that can you know that their family tree actually will go back that far a lot of nuts hanging on that family tree but right <laughs> Me being one on mine for sure. All right. First John chapter four, right? Right. I'm right this time. You're right. All right. And why I was thinking five last time, but anyhow, here we are in chapter four. 
Uh, a very, not that any uh, scripture is not good for doctrine, but boy, these sure are. And listen what he said, and it starts off with verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because there are many false prophets are gone out into the world. How do we know whether the spirit that we're feeling or that is leading or prodding or being uh, exercised is of God? How, what, what's the number one way that you'll know? Jesus Christ. It points to Jesus Christ all glory, all honor, all praise. Anything that exalts itself is an antichrist spirit. That which is of God. Remember the Holy Spirit came back for... Now notice that the, the spirit uh, believe not every spirit uh, and then the next one but try the spirits. That's plural. Believe not in other words uh, there, how many Holy Spirits are there? One. But there are many. So what is those spirits? Where do they come from? They're all bad. If there's no, other than the Holy Spirit, they're all bad. Alright? That's just they're not none of them good. Why? Because they, again, they oppose or they're they're anti-Christ. They exalt themselves above Christ. So if we're looking at this, if we're not, these these spirits are fallen angels, in my opinion now, that ha uh, are in the spirit form. Any, anybody in here ever seen an angel? But yet the Bible said the angels of the Lord encamp about them. Right? The scripture talks about an uh, innumerable uh, number of angels that are in heaven. And what are they doing? They're going to and fro. I mean, I realize there's some that are there that are worshiping God, but most of them are there to carry out God's will, bring God's plan of protection upon our lives. So as, as remember, Satan drew a third of them away. Some are, case, are, are bound in chains of darkness that are already reserved until the day of judgment. Some are still running loose. Uh, if we don't believe in demon spirits, mark angels off the list. You can't have one without the other. But yet in the world today, if people were possessed with demons in Christ's day, what about today? How many times have we heard someone that Kill brutally murdered somebody, and they say a voice in my head told me to do it. You know what that is? That's a demon. I just can't. You know, all these serial killers, they'll tell you they just couldn't stop it. There was something on the inside of them. They knew it was wrong at first, but it got stronger. They could not control it. Why? Because they were controlled, not by themselves. Now, now understand this. You don't have power over the flesh within yourself, by the way. All right, I do want to throw that out there. You're led or controlled by either the Holy Spirit or the demons of hell. Right? <laughs> I think you're talking about false teachers. Uh, I, it goes on. It gets into false teachers there, Brother Charlie. Uh, many false prophets are going out into the world. If the Holy Spirit has anointed me to preach the true gospel, what anoints these false prophets? Because there's a spirit about them. I mean, the Bible talks about the Antichrist, and when he comes in the end, that he'll work great signs and great wonders. And if it were possible, the Antichrist and the false prophet, the, or the, the, the final false prophet, because we know there's many, but the final, you know, the head of that false prostate 
apostate church that would be in the end, uh, the, that unholy trinity, the devil and the false prophet and, and, and the antichrist, that they'll have their power, the Bible said, if possible, to deceive the very elect. Now the elect are the 144,000. That's who the elect is that will be sealed at the end time. The church won't be here. I want everybody to understand that when they're on the main stage. So, but if people today that will come in this church sit under anointed preaching and will not heed the word, the call of the gospel to the altar, but they'll believe that. You know why? Here's why. And here's what's going on in the world today. The Bible said that in the last days, we studied this in Peter, they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. If I'm preaching something that makes you feel, feel good about yourself, I'm preaching the wrong doctrine. And there's, again, there's a wrong power, but there's power in it. And it's going on every day in our society these people pat them on the back. And, you know, here's the thing about the gospel. It will convict or convince us of our sin. It'll show us that we're wrong. And if it's not convicted, <laughs> Virgil always said this about, he said, Jamie will kick you a step all over, stomp your toes, and if you pull your feet back under the seat, he'll kick you under the shins. Here's the thing. It's not Jamie. I don't have an axe to grind against anybody in here. Alright? I just got to preach the truth. Verse 2. How be it? Know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come into the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses that. How, now, I, I realize he said he would make his uh, 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 angels ministering spirits. So, as again, possibly, I don't believe an angel can enter into your body, but I believe they can lead you or guide you or prod you, all right? They don't, I don't think they can enter into your body. I think the false, the, the devilish kind can. You, you know, we've seen, the, I remember the, the cartoons back in the day, you know, you had the little red devil on this side and the little angel on this side with the halo and the wings and this one had the horns and a pitchfork saying, go ahead, and the other one said, don't do it. And you, really, I mean, that's in real life. We laugh at that and we make fun of that, but it's always that, that struggle between good and evil, that evil trying to pull you in the wrong direction and that Holy Spirit and desire is to lead us and guide us and say, don't do that. It, 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 it keeps those that flash in that yellow light. Stop. That green light. It'll actually get to where it flashes. That red light. Stop where you are. You can run, run the red light, then you get run over, right? <laughs> All right. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which we have heard that it should come. Even now ready is it, is it in the world. So it's nothing new. What's going on in our society is nothing new. We, we think we, in, our, in our, our minds, in our little feeble minds, well, you know, homosexual it, it just, you know, used to be, it, it, it was just there and it wasn't. I'm going to tell you, men have always, our people, I'll say it that way, have always, whether it be drugs or alcohol or whatever, that stuff's always been there. The thing is today, it is number one, with, with with the technology that we have, it's posted everywhere. And, and they, uh, with the, they have the government, you know, it used to be against the law. Do you know that? You would go to jail. I mean, if you get caught with drugs right now, I mean, I, I, I mean, if you've got a big amount of drugs right now, they're going to haul you off because they're saying you're dealing. But if you've got a few drugs in your pocket, you know, for recreational use, Rheumatism medicine, as some of them used to call it. You know, you got a couple of joints sewed up in your pocket. 
you know, they'll, they'll, they'll find you and send you on your way. Used to be all that stuff was jail time. Sodomy used to be a jailable offense. If people, I mean, and willingly, it used to be. I mean, you get, we can go right on. Remember? <laughs> Every county around here used to be dry. I mean, all across the United States, it was illegal to drink. They did it, though. But they did it, though. That's the thing is. And, and you know, well, so I, I, I was asked this question. How do I feel about medical marijuana? I say, had someone messaged me and asked me that question. I said, medically... Purpose-wise, it is no different than any other drug that you're going to take. True. I'm far. I'm talking narcotic drugs. All right. I realize Tylenol is not in that same class as marijuana. Okay. But I'm saying medically, purpose-wise, it is no different. There are people. Listen to me today. That their doctor has told them. Drink one beer a day for their kidneys. That ain't wrong, church. We labelize it as it, but it, when it, Paul said, take a little wine for that stomach sick. That often in front, there are, but when we use something for self gratification or to reach out to help ourselves and make ourselves, uh, uh, I, I just need to escape for just a few minutes. Have you heard that? Well, I have. Like if I could just drown my sorrows for a little while in that bottle. Here's the thing. Them sorrows are still there when the alcohol wears off or, or the peel wears off or the needle wears off or the joint wears off. Whatever. It's still there. The only thing that takes away your sorrow is, is the joy of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that true? All right. Any questions or comments? Verse 4. Ye are, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is within you than he that is in... So who's in the world? The devil. Here's the thing about the devil. But, all right, he is not omnipresent. God's omnipresent, which means everywhere. Is the devil everywhere? No, but them that are on his side are everywhere. All right? God, God, God can hear and lead and guide everyone in the world the devil can. Now he's got help. But still you've got as much how many thinks the devil's weak? By no means is the devil weak. So if, the, if we establish the fact that the devil is strong and powerful I mean is there anybody in here on your own that you think you can handle him that can handle him? Anybody here even want to try? But not me. Absolutely not me. I mean, if he can transform him for himself into an angel of light, kind of scares me really what his appearance does look like. Just saying. I have never read anywhere in the scriptures, listen to me today, that anyone ever saw an angel and was joyous. I want you to think about it. They're the good guys. Every person that ever laid eyes on an angel in the, in the scripture was scared to death. They are mighty. They are powerful. If the angels are mighty... Here's the thing about the angels is Michael the archangel is more powerful than the devil. Guess where Michael gets his power? 
from God our Father. So if Michael is that strong, imagine how strong our God, our Lord, our Savior is. Greater is He that's within you. The things are out there, but how can you overcome? By the blood of Jesus Christ. By the power, by the Holy Spirit. By that verse 4, next chapter, gives it a lot of insight. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. We're to be able to overcome all temptation. Verse 5, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. When someone's telling you and patting you on the back and telling you what you want to hear, that's what this is speaking of. They are of the world, they speak of the world, they, I mean it's all about the world. What is the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I know I've said this before, but never in all of my life, because I realize that social media has made it everything a hundred thousand times worse, but I have I ever heard so many people make the statement, it's time I start thinking about me. Put myself first. That's not what the scripture teaches you and I. That should never come out of the mouth of a child of God. Greater love hath no man than this, a man laid down his life for his friends. Remember, a new commandment, I have given to you, uh, that, that I have given unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. How did he love us? They laid down his life. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a commandment that you and I are, are, have been given today, it is to love, here's the thing, unconditionally. I know it's hard. When someone is spitefully abusing you, they're running their mouth against you, they're saying things that you know is not true, they're hurting you and they're hurting your family. I, there's not one person in here that doesn't want to get up in arms. Amen. Come on now. Amen. I'm just being honest with you. That's really not what the Scripture teaches us. Pray for your enemies and them that spitefully abuse you, thereby heaping coals of fire upon their head. Oh my. What that's really saying is by putting God's judgment, because vengeance belongs to God. All right. Verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. And he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Error. In West Virginia, spirit of error. In here in Ohio, spirit of error. <laughs> right? <laughs> in Kentucky, it'd be the spirit of error too, wouldn't it? <laughs> we know, again, here's the thing. Them that have never been uh, introduced or filled with the Spirit of God don't know any different. You know why? They are blind and cannot see. Uh, I, I should have mentioned this in prayer request, but it just came to me. Remember Brother Wayne O'Leary. He, he is on our, our church Facebook group. He's part of ours. Uh, he he's travels to different colleges and schools, universities over there, teaching the Word of God. And right now he's traveling to Romania. That's not a friendly country. He just got back a little bit ago from Ukraine, which is not a very friendly country. God, God protected him. But pray for his safe travels as he goes there and he teaches whatever course it is. He, uh, the Puritan movement is his big thing. That's why he asked to join our church because I simply said, hey, who are you and why would you want to join our church? And that's how I found that out. Is he told me, he said, I've studied intensely. He said, I actually go around teaching about the Puritan movement and I actually would like to learn more 
I said, if you ever come stateside, come see us, because we like we like to know more about it. I mean, I, I don't know why this little community out here was ended up being called Puritan where it got that name at. Anybody? Don't know. Don't know. Huh? It was on the history on Facebook, but I can't dig on articles about it. Why it actually got its name of Puritan. How it come, how it come about. Okay. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. And he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Boy, ain't that the truth. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that we, God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here's the thing about you and I. We're dying. Are we not? I mean, every one of us in here is a day closer to the grave than what we was this time yesterday. And I know, I know we really don't want to think about that. We don't want to leave our families. We don't want to leave the life that God has blessed us with here. But where is it that we long to be? With God. In heaven. With God. So there's only two ways that can take place. Either you get raptured out or you die. To be absent from the body is present with the Lord. So, knowing that the, God was, that the love of God was made manifest toward us because He gave His Son that we might live through Him is not here. I realize today He's given us an abundant life here. But He gave us eternal life. Right? I mean, is there anybody here who would like to live in this world in a shape that's in forever? I mean, in, in the... the uh, Again, the 51 that I, years that I've been up on this earth, the dif difference I have seen in society from then till now. Just at the time that I got saved in 1976 until now. From 2000 till now. I want to be here forever, do you? Thank God there's a new life coming for you and I. And it's not here. Here it is, love that we love God, but that He loved not that we love God, but He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for us. Because, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love ourselves, one another, not our, not uh, ourselves, but one another. If God loved us enough to give His Son, we are so to love one another that we be willing to lay down our lives for the brethren. Or I'm going to say this, for a lost and dying world. No man has seen God at any time. If we love God, Let's say, well, hold, just, just stop that. No man has seen God at any time. But wait a minute. In the book of uh, Hebrews, it talked about Moses speaking with God face to face. No man has seen God at any time. But yet Moses, Moses saw the hinder parts of God. We know that. God, he told Moses, said, you can't look at my face and live. Now Moses, actually what it said, Moses talked with God. Didn't say he sing God. Moses would talk with God face to face. That she, I believe that Shekinah glory cloud was there. I, I, that's my opinion. 
And it kind of blocked the face of God because had Moses saw the face of God, we know what he told him. He would have died. No man has seen God at any time. There's a little thing behind that word time. What is it? Period. That ends that sentence. What does that mean? That means it is settled. It's fact. It's there. And you can't change it. No man, no man has seen God. Now who I think that even Moses saw the hundred parts of was the, the, what we call a Christophany or a pre-birth, pre-Bethlehem appearance of Christ. That's who I think he saw. When Jacob wrestled with the angel, I think that Jacob wrestled with Christ. I mean, I mean all the different places we could go through. When Abraham lifted his eyes up and he saw three men coming and, and the two men went on to Sodom after the meal and one of them walked with Abraham and said, I, shall I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm about to do? Who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? God used the two angels to do it, but God destroyed, God overthrew them. The angels just carried it out. But it was God and God's directions. God, God is the one that done the judging. God, if you can find 50, will you spare it? I mean, all that. So if, if no man has seen God at any time, who did he see? Is the Scripture contradicting itself? Because here's what, here's what the world says. They take this verse and say this proves to us that the Bible is not true when I think it's speaking of Father God, in my honest opinion, no man has seen God. They've seen His Son. His Son's always been here. Here's the, here's the thing about it, huh? There's a man called Melchizedek. Or something like that. Melchizedek, the, 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 the Prince of Peace, I think was a, was a pre incarnate Christ. Or, or, or Christophany, whatever they call that big word, uh, that talks about the pre-Bethlehem appearance of the Old Testament. There, I think he, I think that's who it was, because he had no beginning, and he had no end, no mother, no father. Just say it. So I, so when you hear that, and someone asks you, you tell them this is speaking of Father. God, not God the Son. Because there's many references to people that have seen God, right? Uh, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. God dwells in us. How does God dwell in us? If we haven't seen God, how does God dwell in us? God the Spirit. That's what man can't wrap their head around without that faith, believing that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, these three are one, agree as one, they work together as one, but yet they're three. God dwells in us through the Holy Spirit. If the heaven is His throne and the earth is His supposed to, and He's that big and my little old heart is probably about this big around, how would God live in that? How does He live in that? He lives on the inner man, not the physical man. On the heart of the inner man. Bring to live all every Christian and that to be in the form of a spirit. Right? Yep. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. That's how he knows that we are his, is that Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us and gets this, corrects us. Chastens us. That's how we know we're His. I mean, if the Scripture plainly tells us if, if God doesn't chasten us, then we're not sons, we're bastards. 
We're not His. But if He, he chastens those He loves, the, in other words, he, he, he takes you to a woodshed and you get a whipping. Ain't nobody whip you like the Lord can. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Who is the we? Now I think John was speaking there of himself and the apostles. But I think we as the church can speak to that fact that God sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. Don't we all believe that? We sing the song, what a Savior. Uh, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him and He in God, and we have known and believe the love that God has uh, to us. God is love, and He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in Him. Any questions? I mean, it really, some of these verses, I mean, just take it for face value. There's no hidden meaning in there. No big question to try to figure out. We know that we believe the love that God had to us. How many, how many knows God loves you? I mean, that's what this says. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Hereby is love made perfect, that we may have uh, boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world how is God sins how are we in God sins remember we are we have been justified means just as if we had never sinned so we are sinless in God because God is sinless. Remember, when God saved you, God didn't save you and say, now work out your own righteousness and your own salvation. What God did is God gave you or imputed or applied. The Scripture talks about us being arrayed in white robes. And white robes are given to the saints. And that white robe is the righteous. It is given, applied, put on. By who? By God Himself. Remember the, the, the parable that Jesus taught that a, a certain man made a great marriage supper for his son and began to, to uh, bid the guests and they came into the wedding and there was a guy that did have on the wedding garment. How did they, everybody else get the wedding garment? Because they had been given it by the host of the house. And they were all clothed in that special garment which signified they had been there by invitation and accepted the invitation ahead of time. So this guy just strolls in. So man, there's a party going on. Let me just stroll in and just see if I can't crash a party and make myself at home. You know, I just get me a drumstick in each hand and just walk around and talk and find me a, a flag and a wine and I just have me a big eye to make a party of this. And the master of the house comes in and says, Who are you and how did you get here? Fellas, take him, cast him out. Scripture said, actually, in the outer darkness where there's weeping and waiting and gnashing of teeth. Not just out. I mean, out, out. That is, that is a foreshadow of things to come. Remember, there will be many of that day who will say, Lord, have we not done many marvelous works? We've cast out devils in your name. We've done miracles. We've preached. We've sang. We've witnessed. We've, done, we've won souls to you, God. We've done miracles. All these different things. God, we did it for you. And he said, I never knew you. I mean, you might have got rich doing those things. You might have had your own fancy jet. You might have had your $11 million sanctuary. You might have had your own television show and your own Rolex and your own limousine, your own air conditioned dog house, but you never had me. You don't suffer, I mean, that was one, and one of the things that was talked about when Jim and uh, Tammy Baker fell in their ministry. They had an air conditioned dog house.
heat and cold. I mean, that thing was fine. That dog lived in a life of luxury. Evidently, they all backslid. I don't know. I, I, that's between them and God. I'm not their judge. I just know that it brought a reproach upon the church. That's why we've got to be careful. Now, I realize some people take it too far to the extreme. Thank God for you guys who are a blessing to my family. But I know other churches, I know other churches that absolutely don't take care of their pastor. Don't take care of, of people's needs. I mean, I mean people, it, it's... I had a fellow today that sent me a message wanting to know where tithing that is in the Bible. Yeah. Now this guy's a young Christian, so I let it slide. He wasn't raised actually in church. A friend of mine, good fellow. I just took a snapshot of it, screenshot it on my phone, and sent it to him. Malachi chapter 3. But it actually goes way back before that, back into Abraham's day, back to Melchizedek. That's you know, that's the scripture that most people use. And I realized some will say, well, you're, we're living in grace dispensation. I, I can't find where God changed it. I, I know Paul said, let every man lay aside as God hath prospered him. In other words, when your payday rolls around, you lay up God's part. <laughs> Alright? Alright, where are we at? 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I am not afraid to stand before God. Because I know my name is written in the book of life. I know my sins are gone. Are there things in my, in my life that, that, that I, works that will be burned up? That I'll be ashamed of? Every one of us will be standing there with that. Every one of us. But thank God... For mercy and grace. Right? Uh, we love Him because He first loved us. If, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a lar. That's West Virginia. Lar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not sing. So how do we prove to the world that we love God? <coughs> huh? How do you prove you love everybody? Huh? How do you prove to the world that you love them? By your actions, by the way you treat them, with re with respect, with compassion. Remember, if you see your brother naked, to and desolate, and shut up your bowels with compassion, how grow the love of God in you? Right. If we remember the road, fella. I think I covered it last week. You were going down the road to Jericho. There's a fellow in the ditch, and we just walked right on by, knowing we could have helped. I just and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Hold that right there. John chapter 15 verse 11 These things have I spoken unto you that your joy might be uh, remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So John's writing this in the gospel according to John. In this first John as he's writing to the church listen to what he said. 
And this commandment have we from Him, from Christ, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Go down verse 17 in chapter 15. These things I command ye, that ye love one another. Christ kept coming back to that. you got to remember, as He was getting ready to leave here, these disciples didn't have the Holy Spirit inside of them. Did they? Only thing they had was Christ. Remember when they, He's arrested a few hours later, they scatter like sheep. I mean, they run, they hide. They, they finally come back together. They're there in the upper room. And here comes Mary Magdalene after the crucifixion. Three days later, or, or, or Mary, she came to you. Hey, they've taken the Lord. We don't know where they've taken Him. I mean, and the, and the fellas, He's risen. I've seen the Lord. I mean, all these different accounts that come back to them. But yet, they have doubt in their heart. And later that evening, he there's all sitting there in the room pondering all these things. I mean, they're just discussing what's been going on. I mean, can you imagine? Uh, about, in, in, in Luke, it talks about and all his acquaintances followed him. In other words, all twelve. Uh, other, well, other than Judas. Judas is now dead. The other eleven stood afar off. John was at the foot of the cross. So the other ten stood afar off, watched Jesus die, watched Him taken off the cross. No doubt saw Him buried in the tomb. <laughs> and when they get there, John just stops outside when he stops at the empty tomb. Peter runs in, sees the grave closed, sees the night confounded, walks out with his head down. They don't know what to think. They're confused. I mean, they, the, all the, everything that Jesus has told them, I mean, nothing like this has ever happened before or since. And all of a sudden, as they're there in that upper room or, or in that room and the door being shut, only ten of them are there because we know that Thomas wasn't there. And he appeared to them and said, Hey, and it was hello, peace. And he breathed upon them. The Holy Spirit comforted them, strengthened them. Did that, did that enter into them and dwell? No, but it strengthened them for their journey that they might believe. That's what God does to you and I every service. Every time that we come, I mean, even when we're driving in the car and we're listening to a song or a sermon and it blesses our heart, that is God breathing upon us, strengthening us, His Spirit. All right, that covers 1 John chapter 4. We'll do 5, Lord willing, next week. No, next week is uh, the day before Thanksgiving. We will do Thanksgiving. All right. All hearts free. Well, an ambassador back there, yes. Yeah. Phil, please get an ambassador. Jerry, did you get your...